So now we're going to put the student saddle on my horse and I'm going to show you a little bit of fitting and how it should sit on the horse. So this is the brown saddle that I showed you earlier. This is actually Vinyamaro's saddle. I'm only setting it on Cadillac because his black one isn't fully broken in yet. And when, you, when your saddle is fully broken in, what you don't want to see is a lot of movement in this direction. Okay, I have to really press to get this saddle to unbalance itself. And when the saddle sits on the horse, because this is a cut back flap, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit behind the vertical, this saddle. Um, when you're fitting your horse with, this is with a broken in saddle, um, you want at least two fingers of clearance here. And there are some saddle makers today who will tell you two fingers isn't enough. However, if you're riding with a spring tree, it is enough and it will give you really, really close contact with the horse. You, of course, do not want pressure on your horse's withers. So the width of the saddle has to be correct. If you have a look here on how the panel fits the horse, when the girth is strapped on this horse, you're going to have a very, very close contact panel. Um, and because it's a long girth that will sit approximately here, uh, it is not going to interfere with the horse's motion. Now, this Steuben saddle is made to sit a little bit further forward than your average uh, dressage saddle today, your average modern dressage saddle. There's a lot of saddle makers making saddles that they want to sit back here. That is, in my opinion, too far back because it gets the rider's seat bones closer to the horse's center of motion, which is located right about here, okay? You want to get away from the center of motion and sit closer over the horse's center of gravity, which is located here. So you want your seat bones as close as possible to this center of gravity. And what this saddle does is encourage you to sit with your seat bones always in the direction of the center of gravity. Also, because there's no knee or thigh block, your knee is actually the reason it's called a knee roll is because your knee is supposed to be on it, okay, not pushed backward by it. So this actual knee, this padding here where your knee would go, my knee sits on this saddle right about here, which is, is correct. Your knee really should be quite far ahead of your seat bones. So if my seat bones are here on the saddle, my knee should be positioned quite a bit further ahead of that point so that I am centered over the horse's center of gravity. Now, you don't want that rock in the saddle, and you want a feeling of levelness when you put the saddle on the horse. When you buy a brand new saddle, it is not going to sit like this, okay? It takes probably a week to get it to, to begin to look like this. Brand new saddle is going to, the stuffing here will not become compressed, so it's going to sit up like this, and you go, oh my god, it doesn't fit. Don't panic, okay? Put a girth on it, strap it down, ride it in it a couple times, and you'll find that it breaks in nicely to your horse. I've got to warn you, when you're breaking in these saddles, you can probably see here, I put an extra hole in this girth strap. That's because with even my longest girth, I can't get it up to these holes to, to initially get it on the horse. These have to stretch a little bit. And you can see these two have stretched more than those two because these are the two that I use. These have to stretch a little bit. So you might need a bit of a longer girth uh, in the beginning before your saddle is broken in. Okay, so this is what your saddle should look like when it's on the horse. And again, I'm just breaking this one in on Cadillac, so for me it's still a little bit high in the front. I've probably ridden in it six, seven times. By next week I expect it to be fitting him nearly perfectly. And by the way, you should always have a Steuben saddle fitter come check your saddle after six weeks and make sure that it's sitting on the horse the way it should because that's when you'll want to change the filling in the panels, the, um, the wool in the panels, to see if you need a different balance on the saddle. Now this is another piece of equipment that I have used for years and years and I caution you, learn how to use this, don't hurt your horse with it, and no, it's not a head setter. <laughs> People have joked about it. This is a girth crank. And if you're going to use a long girth, the girth crank is like wrist insurance. It saves you from breaking your joints, okay? Um, this is not so that you can get the girth so tight that your horse can't breathe. But what it does is when you tighten your girth, um, it relieves the pressure on you. So it makes it, makes it really easy to do. I gotta warn you, if you get the girth so tight that you cannot get it off with your hand and your hand alone, then it's too tight. So that's probably the best way to measure if your girth is too tight or not. We always walk our horses in between tightenings so that they don't get stressy that it's getting too tight too quickly. Now, I will tighten this one more hole before I get on him. You want, ideally, if you're using a long girth, you want the buckles to be on the third or fourth hole in height. And that way, if they're, if they're at this position, they do not bother your leg, okay? 
If they're down at this position, then they're going to be right where you want your leg to be. So you want them on the third or fourth hole to make yourself comfortable. Uh, and then after I, I've tightened the girth as much as I want to, I'm going to close the uh, over girth. There's one more option I wanted to show you on this stirrup leather. You see I roll them at the top like this. This is just old preference going back to my Schulteis days. But on this new saddle, you also have the option of running the stirrup leather through this slit in the, the flap. You can put it down here like this so you can hide it if you want to, if you've got a shorter one. Um, you've got all kinds of options of what to do with your stirrup leather. So this saddle's got a nice coat of tacky saddle soap on it. My girth is tight enough. Uh, I'm going to do up my over girth. This is not a piece of equipment you want to make extremely tight. I would say snug. I can still get my whole hand in there. Uh, this will keep the flaps secured, but you don't want it so tight that if your horse bucks or does something untoward, that um, the strap breaks. Okay, that you don't want. And don't forget after you get your saddle, I might talk to Steuben about doing this at the factory, put that rivet in there because you're going to need it after a couple of years. Uh, there's one more element to being ready to ride in this type of equipment, and that is the Stiefelhaft that we spoke about earlier. This isn't quite a used can. This is basically pine resin, and all that it does is um, give me a little bit of tacky surface here, which lasts about the first 10 minutes of your ride, and then it fades off. The other thing it does, if you use it over the years, you'll notice this, keeps your boots from wearing out at the top. You won't wear a hole in the top of your boots, and you won't wear the saddle so much. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, what the science is behind that, but it is true. Okay, so we are now ready to ride. <laughs>